Ninja, what is happening? This is Trent and I am back. Uh, as you all know, recently I did a Easy Art Lessons tutorial series. This was uh, lesson six through 10. I covered a lot of things uh, to do with perspective, how to draw structures in perspective, drawing on paper. These things apply obviously to digital as well. And uh, a few people actually did the homework and then went ahead and tagged me on Twitter over there. And I wanted to cover just a few things uh, this is not by any means to pick it apart or, or make anybody feel like, oh, geez, you should have done this or you should have done that. This is just general feedback on some common mistakes that I see from individuals that are drawing in perspective, uh, utilizing, you know, even a lot of the things that uh, I covered in my, my tutorials. I just wanted to go over these because it might help some other people who are also maybe struggling or missed a couple of points that were covered in the lessons. And uh, looks like first up, we've got Ernesto de Feliz, or possibly Felice. Uh, and so what we've got here is kind of like, it looks like maybe uh, you've got, uh, maybe it's a sort of a uh, stand or an adobe type of a structure. It looks like, these look like they're obviously wooden um, uh, planks. I'm gonna pick a color here so that I can actually really, you can really see it here. Uh, so we've got like some wooden uh, planks sticking through, which gives an Im impression of a kind of a construction that it's not just a, uh, it's not just a flat wall. It's actually got like this cool little chip out of it. And there's some neat stuff going on here. Uh, we can kind of trace out to figure out where our uh, perspective lines are. And I'm just going to time lapse here so we can get to the meat of the, the feedback here. So we have our vanishing point one over here. We have our vanishing point two over here, which means that our horizon line is going to go right through the middle, pretty much just the middle of the page. Uh, so what, what we've got here is a situation where we've got a couple of items here that aren't in perspective. and. Um, this right here is, is one of them particularly. You've got these things that are kind of going off into their own perspective. And if you've got lines going across your doorway, every single line should be going to that vanishing point. And you've got it right up here, uh, obviously across the top, but we need to make sure that these elements on our door are also going to that vanishing point. So the best thing that you could have done would be to uh, draw out your guides and make sure that those are going across to the vanishing point. The same would be true with your windows. So these are, uh, they're not lined up appropriately. You should, you should have that vanishing point line so that the bottom of your window right here goes off to the vanishing point. This would be the location of the bottom of this other window. And obviously uh, the top of the window would be the same. So when we draw this out, if we were to connect it there, the top of your window over here should have been something more like this. If it was the same exact style of window, which it should be because it's on the same structure, then it should have been something more like that. That would have aligned it a little bit more so that the scale is appropriate. Uh, the other factor is, of course, the, the width of things. So here you have the width of the space between each one of these wooden uh, planks that are sticking out of, out of the wall. Uh, the distance up here looks like it's roughly, uh, maybe I don't want to use exact measurements, but the distance between these two should be shorter as it goes off into the distance. And you have them kind of spaced about equally apart, and in some cases even farther. Now that's fine if you want it to look really organically uh, constructed, but the fact is is that it should probably, these should be a lot closer together so that by the time you get out to here, they're pretty damn close together. Um, and this should be a, a gradually progressing distance of, of space between these. It shouldn't be exactly the same uh, width between each of these guidelines. Um, the same is true over here. So on this side, you almost have a different style of door. And I would recommend probably sticking to the same style of door as what you have on the front. Uh, so over here, you've got like this kind of uh, a rounded uh, arch. And then over here, you've got like a different type of like a pointed uh, top. And that kind of confuses the consistency of shape language across your whole door. You have some other interesting elements here. These crates, I think you should draw in a, a character. 
uh, for scale, something that says, okay, so like a character is probably just draw a stick figure. It's fine. Just so that you know, okay, so that's six feet tall. I'm just drawing a, a dumb looking stick figure <laughs> silhouette just to give a sense of scale. So this crate right here is itty beady and that's fine if you wanted an itty beady crate, but if you want it to look like it's a, a, a large crate, then it's going to have to be bigger than that. And again, here, how do we calculate this out? Well, this, the bottom is going to have to go back to this vanishing point. And the top of that is going to have to go back to this vanishing point. So this crate should go off in these vanishing points, the same vanishing points that we established. So the, the other side of that box would be right here, and that should go back to the vanishing point too. So that this should connect here, connect like that, yada, yada. Bing, bang, and a boom. I'm drawing from the wrong point. Don't get confused about which points you're drawing from. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out. Uh, with positioning uh, some of the, the scale and the size of elements in your scene. And remember, uh, these mistakes are, are, it's okay to make these mistakes as long as you're paying attention and kind of going, oh, okay, so like now I understand how to better position my windows. Now I have a better understanding of how to shape my doors and position objects within my scene. So every piece is a learning experience. It shouldn't be something that should stop you. It should be something that you run with and you can explore uh, using that new knowledge that you've acquired with every drawing to better advance so that the next one's even better. So good job, Ernesto. You did pretty good. Uh, looking forward to seeing your improved version uh, if you do more structures in the future, which I hope you do. Next up, we have Redbeard. Redbeard did pretty good with his. I do suspect that possibly with this tree, we might not see so much of the underside of the tree, although it looks like our horizon line is probably going to be up here. And that's why I say that. Uh, we wouldn't see as much of the underside of the tree if the horizon line is, is above us. And also you probably want to avoid putting your horizon line too close to the top of the structure of your building. I think I may have done that, which could have been done a little bit better. I love the construction that you've got up here. This is really neat. I mean, obviously you're pulling a lot of influence and inspiration from the source material, but I love the variations. I love the deviations that you've made. Uh, this kind of like a underground uh, bunker or access to a basement is really neat. Uh, I love the, uh, the gate you're thinking about, like where the steps connect. And uh, you've got a similar uh, style of construction across the board. I like the additions that you made. This is really neat. I love the chimney, crooked chimneys. I'm a sucker for crooked chimneys. Good job, Redbeard. Nice one. I don't have any real heavy critique on this other than to say maybe with your hatching, um, if you're going to do hatching like this, maybe go a little bit more gentle with it and be consistent with your surface. You've got this cross hatch here on half of it, and that just kind of confuses it a little bit more. So uh, you're also a little heavy handed with your lines, and I'd suggest uh, maybe not making them so thick except around the outside parts. I love this part that sticks out from the center. It's got an almost World of Warcraft feel to it. So uh, good job, Redbeard. Next up, we have Jason Olson. And uh, Jason, I think you've got some really neat stuff here. I love that everybody's kind of starting to make it their own. They're doing their own kind of a thing with it. You've got, uh, this isn't just the doing an exact copy of what was done in the tutorial. Uh, I, it's obvious that up here, you, you did a good job with uh, making sure that your, uh, everything is going off to the correct vanishing point. I can kind of see faint uh, lines showing me where that vanishing point is. It almost goes off screen but I can still see it. Something like that, pretty close. Uh, up here, you did kind of, it looks like your secondary uh, point, uh, vanishing point though, however, let me draw another layer so that I can just uh, see if I can find where the second vanishing point is because I'm seeing some discrepancies. I'm seeing some things that uh, aren't lining up and I wanna figure out why. So if we draw this, through, it looks like we're finding our vanishing point right there. All right, we've got one of them. We've got two of them here. It looks like it goes off the sheet. And then if we line this up 
here across this is what I'm looking at to line up your vanishing point. And then where's the, the last one? This one should connect us. This one should show us exactly where that, that vanishing point is. It's the bottom of this house. Some of these aren't lining up correctly. And that's kind of what's creating a little bit of a skewed, squeezed feeling. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're, you're a little bit more precise about your, your vanishing point. So a way to fix this is to just draw through. If you really need to draw off of the page for a vanishing point, then it's not a bad idea to have another sheet underneath this one. It looks like you have a mark here, but I, if that was your vanishing point, you missed a few of them. The other thing that I wanna say is that it doesn't feel like the center of this roof is in the middle of your building. And I think that it would have been beneficial for you to draw that line straight down and then make sure that the distance between from here, from here to here is about just over the distance between here and here so that it feels like what we're looking at is the, the, the center of the house is in the center of the house, not, not too far back the way that you have it. So uh, this way you'll notice that looks a little bit more like the, the roof is going down the middle of the house uh, rather than it being uh, rather than it being like too far to the back of the house. You've got some good stuff here. I'm really uh, interested to see uh, what what more you could do with this if you extended this. A good job, definitely good job on lining up your window with the, the details in your door. Uh, it looks like you were pretty damn consistent across the board with your perspective on these elements. I'm not entirely sure uh, what's going on here. If this is like plants growing up the side of this, then I probably would have actually defined a few leaves that really show that what we're looking at here is like a, a plant or a overgrowth of some kind. Something did happen here that was a little bit off with your barrel. And uh, this is the reason why I wanted to kind of point this one out. It would have benefited for you to move that barrel out from the wall just a little bit. I think it's a neat idea, but unfortunately where you're, the base of the barrel connects or where it is uh, butted up against the side of the structure is just a little bit too close and it ends up looking like it's inside of the wall because this, this part here, if you imagine where the base of that cylinder is, uh, it was just, it's all the way up inside of the wall. It's just a little bit too close. You could have really helped by moving that out a little bit. And then of course, adding a little bit of a shadow uh, underneath it. And then having whatever that is spilling out of the side of it. Uh, you could have also benefited if you had this, uh, if you have these leaves or these uh, overgrowth going on here, it can really help if you grow it up the side as well, along a silhouette, an area where you're gonna get a really strong clear uh, read on the silhouette of what it is. If you find that you've got an area where you can't really define what something is because of the camera angle or it's in shadow or something, it's a good idea to have something with similar shapes some other place as well so that you can really clarify, oh, that's that's like this, when you see this sort of shape leaf, uh, that's what this, this is at a different angle. It's the same object at a different angle. And so that way it communicates the same language. The sh that's what we talk about when we talk about shape language. Uh, so you'd see those same shape language coming along here as well. Also, resupport this door, man. Don't, don't hesitate to add in a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you were going for a specific architectural style, but I would have resupported this door with a little bit of trim. This is where it would help to do a little bit of like pull up some reference of an existing structure. I love that you added this at a crooked angle. That's a little bit of storytelling here. And with the number 12, I'm not sure what that means, but it kind of implies that there are a bunch of other huts here, uh, a bunch of other houses uh, with the same kind of a style. And, uh, and I love that that little touch is really neat. I would have added a little bit of thickness to this rooftop. Uh, and I probably would have had, hmm, I like that this is busted up, but maybe like break that down a little bit more and uh, maybe have one of those supports sticking out to kind of show there's an underlying construction underneath this broken up rooftop. Uh, otherwise, really great job. You did miss something here uh, and I wanted to point it out. 
Uh, you notice how, where are these going off to? Where is the perspective going off on these bricks? That confuses the perspective. These should be going back to your vanishing point over here. If you want it to feel like it's in the same perspective as everything else, then all of your bricks need to be going off into the same perspective as the rest of your structure. The same is true down here as well. Uh, these bricks end up being a little bit too small on this close one uh, if, if they're the same size over here. Otherwise, great job, Jason Olson. I think you've done exceptionally well with this. Good jobby job. Can't wait to see your next one. And thanks for tagging me on that one. It's really neat to see your guys' uh, homework. Uh, really neat to see everybody uh, taking on this task and to see some of the neat structures that you guys are cooking up. I'd like to see some modern structures as well. Some like modern day buildings would be really neat to see. If you're really interested in learning how to draw, if you'd like to go to the basics, I've put together the easy art lessons over on my Gumroad channel. I also have a bunch of digital art brushes and a ton of tutorials from all of my years of drawing and doing digital art and AAA video games. So I'd love to see you guys over there, but uh, if you're in for the freebies, come on back. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.